An art collector is selling a collection of rare prints at auction. He paid a total of $5,000 to buy the collection. Depending on the bids for the individual prints, he can make money on the sale or lose money. There is a 20% chance the prints sell for $10,000, a 30% chance the prints sell for $6,500, a 40% chance they sell for $4,500, and a 10% chance they sell for just $3,800. Calculate the art collector's expected value for the sale of these prints. Okay, so this phrase here, expected value, indicates that we have to essentially find the mean of a probability distribution. So what we want to think about here is simply three things. The controlling events that determine the dollar amounts that will be paid out in the problem. So when you think of expected value, try to think of dollar amounts or something like that being paid out or received. And then there's going to be a corresponding probability that those dollar amounts are paid out or received. So there's a controlling event that determines which dollar amounts are paid out. There's a corresponding probability that those events occur and there's an associated dollar amount with each event. So what we're going to do is create a column here that says events, and this is just sort of a column to help us kind of organize the data. And then from there, we'll add in a dollar amount column, or essentially an X column, and then we'll have a P of X column, and that will be the probability that those dollar amounts are paid out. So let's think about the controlling events. So the events here are actually just basically dollar amounts, right? So we can actually just express them neatly as payouts. So there's a, ten, a chance that the prints would sell for $10,000, right? That's one possibility. They could sell for 6,500, it says. There's another possibility there. There's a 40% chance they sell for $4,500. And then it goes on to say there's a 10% chance that they sell for 3,800. So we can actually add the probabilities to this as well right away. So it says again, 20% chance that they sell for 10,000. So we'll write that as a decimal as 0 0.20. It says that there's a 30% chance they sell for 6,500, so 0.30. A 40% chance, right, that they sell for 4,500. And then finally, there's just a 10% chance they sell for 3,800. And if you add these probabilities together, you see that they do add up to one, right? And that's what they need to add up to, so we're good. We have all the probabilities, we have all the possible outcomes then. Okay, now from here, we need the dollar amounts. So you may think, well, isn't the $10,000 a dollar amount? It is, but it's not the actual amount that the person would receive in terms of net profit, right? So. There's two ways we could do this. We could actually work it out with these dollar amounts directly that we have here, like the $10,000, for example. And then at the end, subtract the amount he paid for the collection, right? But we could also just do that as we go ahead of time. So in terms of actual profit, if he sells the prints for $10,000, but he paid $5,000 for the whole collection, he makes a net profit of $5,000, right? So we're going to do the subtraction here ahead of time. That way, at the end, we have our answer when we're finished, right? So we'll just subtract $5,000 from each of these events, right? Each of these dollar amounts here. And we'll just do that all the way down the line. Okay, so what is 5,000 taken away from 6,500? Well, you'll have 1,500 left over. So he would profit there $1,500. However, if they sell for 4,500 only, if you take 5,000 from that, you're losing. So a negative $500, that's important that you remember to put the minus sign. A common error is to forget the negative sign here. And if you forget that, the problem is ruined at that point. So you need to make sure that you don't forget that. All right, and then the other possibility is that he only sells it for $3,800. And if you take $5,000 away from that, he loses $1,200 in that instance, right? Because $1,200 and $3,800 add up to $5,000. Okay, so there's the X dollar amounts. And we're going to now just finish the problem by multiplying the X column and the P of X column together and then summing that column, in other words, totaling it at the end. The total for that column turns out to be our mean. So what we're looking for is this box right here. Whatever ends up here will actually be our mean or our expected value for x. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So you might be able to do some of these in your head because the arithmetic isn't that complicated, but let's go ahead and do them on the calculator just to show how that'd be done. So it'd be 5,000 times 0.2. So you get 1,000 in that case, and then 1,500 times 0.3. So you get the 450 in that case. Then we'll have minus 500 times 0.4. And then you'll have your negative 200. And then finally, the last one is negative 120, or in other words, 
negative 1200 times 0.1. Okay, so there are your four products, right? So you'll have 1,000, 450, minus 200, and minus 120. Okay, and now from there, we can just sum these or perform the subtraction if you think about it that way. 1,000 plus 450 is 1,450. And you'll be subtracting from 1,450 minus 320. That's the total of the negative values. And when you're done, you get 1,130. All right, let's go ahead and interpret this outcome now. So what does it mean to say that he has an average value or an expected value for this investment of $1,130? What it means is that if it was possible for this art collector to buy this same set of prints over and over and over again and sell them at auction with the same probabilities and the same payout outcomes possible, if he could do that over and over and over again, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of times, right? Then his long run average return would work out to be about $1,130. Not precisely probably, right? But close to that. And if he could sell the same sprints at auction millions and millions and millions of times, it would be even closer to $1,130, his average return. What do I mean by average return? I mean, you know, sometimes he'd make the full $5,000 off of the experiment. Other times he might only make 1500 more often probably he'd lose $500 on the deal and very rarely but occasionally he'd lose $1200 on the deal when he looked across all the times he had bought these prints or ones that are very similar right so that he would have the exact same purchase price and the exact same probability distribution for the sale if he did that over and over and over and over again and he looked at all the money he brought in and divided it by the number of times he repeated the experiment. So he calculated an average return, in other words. The average would be close to 1,130. And the more times he repeated the experiment, when he looked at the average result, the average return, it would get closer and closer and closer the more times he repeated the experiment. So that in the very, very, very long run, it'd be very close to 1,130. And if he could do this for an infinite number of lifetimes and do it over and over every day, right? So just continuously buy these prints, sell them at auction with the same probability distribution, then we're saying that the difference between his average return for all those actual trials and this number we calculated would be infinitesimally small. And so what we're saying is in the very theoretical long run, his average return, if he could do this over and over and over again forever, would be 1,130. Of course, he can't do it over and over again. And of course, in this situation, he's not going to buy art that's identical. He's not gonna have the exact same likelihoods that he earns these dollar amounts, et cetera, because every set of prints would be slightly different. Um, times would be different, et cetera, et cetera. So there'd be lots of different variables going into this. But in general, in life and in business, et cetera, you should try to make plays that have a positive expectation or a positive expected value. If generally all your decisions tend to have positive expectation, then you'll probably win more times than you lose overall in life. And then, of course, you'd say that your decisions should end up at the end being profitable for you. Of course, you'll still lose occasionally, even when you have a positive expectation in theory for the long run, because we're not talking about a long run here. We're talking about one purchase of prints and one sale at auction. He could very well end up down here losing $1,200, right? He could end up losing 500, and that's probably the most probable outcome here, right? But then again, he also has a 50% chance of making some kind of a profit and a very healthy profit if he gets lucky and sells it for the full $10,000. So that's kind of how you interpret expected value, right? It's the idea of a theoretical long run average, right? And if you could repeat it over and over and over again, you'd get very close to this number, right? You know, so several thousand trials would be probably pretty close to this number. Several millions would be closer still, and several billions of trials would be even closer still, right? And then, of course, if you could go out to an infinite number of trials, then it would actually arrive at this number or be so close you couldn't distinguish the actual average from this number. It would be very, 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 very close. Okay, so that's kind of the idea. For those who have taken calculus, that idea might be a little more familiar as the idea of a limit. And if that makes sense to you, great. If not, don't worry about it. But the general idea in life and in business is that you want to make decisions or deals that have positive expectation. And if you did that consistently over the course of your life, you most likely would end up having profitable returns more often than not.